I quit my job um, to work on She's a Crowd full time. And I had a really good job and I loved it. And I guess I just decided I had to take the plunge and fully commit myself. So I had to make some decisions about my lifestyle. So I'm living in my van. The reason that I'm doing this work is because these issues are not prioritised enough and I'm trying to get them prioritised. When we have more data about this problem, people will be held to account because you can no longer say, oh, I didn't know it was happening. When I experienced an abusive relationship I st and I was able to start talking about it and sharing my experience, all these women started telling me their experiences and that's been the last few years. It's basically been people actually coming to me with those experiences and so more and more I'm able to see how prolific it is. If this happened to me and it was as hard as it was for me and I have all these amazing support networks, you know, and that still happened, what's happening to like everyone else? So I'm going to Sydney and I'm really looking forward to meeting with more customers or potential customers. So people that can give me more of an insight into how they might use this kind of tool or this kind of data and obviously that'll continue to shape my company. I have to turn this experience into something that fixes this problem. That's not a question. The question is how do I do that in the most impactful way? Today and tomorrow, on the surface, it's all about, from a tactical perspective, partnerships, sales, the things you're going to need to get from here to the end of the program. In a program like this, what's really important for us is to just simply open the door to conversations that could actually lead to a potential partnership or simply somebody who becomes a sounding board to them that maybe is going to give them the piece of advice that could absolutely change the course of their company. Do I focus around the customer first because my product team are telling me to validate the business model first and foremost? I feel like I want to focus on the user and get that user data set first so that I can develop a product that is then valuable for the customer. So it's a chicken and egg problem. Is there a way that you can focus on, like if you've got one really warm lead that you can kind of go a little bit deeper with mm. them to validate mm. um, or to build out some of that validation model at the same time as you know collecting these stories because at the end at the end of the day I think what you're talking about in terms of the data collection and the story mm. collection and things like that that probably isn't going to change that much how you report it and the way that you report it and you turn that mm. into something that brings in that revenue that could change dramatically we decided that universities were a really good place to start. They're like a microcosm of the real world. So this afternoon I'm meeting with two academics, Bianca Farbourne and Peter Bansell. So what I'm trying to do at the moment is talk to as many different people as I can to understand what data is useful, how it might be used from a researcher's perspective, from the corporate university's perspective, um, I've narrowed my market down to universities, that's my testing ground. What this is attempting to show is that the policies and practices that have been in place aren't actually working. This is a really um, fertile moment because institutions are trying to have more visible, systematic and sustained responses to the question of harassment on campus. It depends yeah. how the data gets used, because often not always just what you collect and how you collect it, it's how other people are using it and interpreting yeah. it. So something like this map, you know, you could interpret it as a series of disconnected individual responses that put the blame back or yeah. you know, emphasis back on women and their behaviour and where they're going. Yeah. Or you could look at it as a collective, you know, um, illustration of the inequalities and discrimination and oppression yeah. that women face. How do we ensure that people are reading it as I'm inputting my experiences for, you know, for data for prevention, not so that everyone else can go 
this is what you know where I should avoid and how to what extent are we despite our best efforts increasing fear So today I'm meeting with a group of university students to do some usability testing for the She's a Crowd platform. We've got it to a point where we know it's working, but what I really need to do is make sure that it's tested with the kinds of people that will actually be using it. I'm hoping for just a discussion that might give me insights. Like if there are any alarm bells or, you know, things that they're like, don't change this, we love this. That's all the kind of stuff that I want. What if you just had, as you suggested, another area where you can start to read the other stories yeah. and then that would give you an indication yeah. of the kinds of things? Would yeah. that be enough? Yeah. You just want to know that you're not alone and that there are other people. Yeah. Is there a reason why sexual assault is under someone I didn't know, not someone I know? Because the biggest portion of sexual assault yeah. is committed by people you know. You do know. I can do like about the... the found or like how it all came about yeah, story I as well yeah. so people see that there is a single friends. person like they're yeah. actually telling it to it's like you hit a roadblock they're like well there's nothing else we can do for you sorry like and then you're like what so what now i just go back to living my life no one ever hears my story there's so much shame and stigma and all these things associated with it and you're like well what do i do now like how do i rebuild my life and then you get this and you're like there is something after this in a way that every other process we've had before has broken them down, this lifts them up. It's so good, you should be so proud of it. It's really, really good. To hear them all just say that they thought that She's a Crowd is absolutely on the right track and is something that made them feel safe and like they would want to share their stories. It was exactly the kind of feedback I wanted. I'm certainly up for the challenge, but I, I still think that there's a way to go in convincing my customers that this is a problem they want to be solving. I think people, despite good intentions, often want that easy kind of fix and that easy solution. Um, and this isn't going to be easy.